How can I do this without you whopping me? I probably can't. Whoop. I was talking to Kyle Rudolph the yep. other night. He's Stop one of them. Whopping me. He's Stop one of them. Whooping me. Kyle Stop. Rudolph is is one of them. Kyle Rudolph is one of them. There are a bunch of them. I was so, talking to Rich Hornberger the other day. There are a whoop, whoop. bunch of them. There are a bunch of former players. There are a bunch of... I'm trying to think of some of your other go-tos. NFL talkers. There's that other San Diego guy whose name escapes me Oh, right Nick now. Hardwick? I was talking to Nick Hardwick. I wasn't talking to Nick Hardwick. Whoop, He's not whoop. one of them. I've yet to find... It'd be fun to ask Loneal. I've yet to find someone. Go to hell, Dibs. <laughs> Go to hell, Dibs. It's my brother. When I ask this question, when at their best, who's the best? And they all say the same thing. So this is not emotional. Right. This is not fanboy. This is always a curious one for me, though. Why? Because everybody, ne- neither team is going to be at their best. Why not? Because no team is ever at their best. Well, I disagree with that. I mean, they might be close to their best. Well, now you're taking the words to be a little bit too exact. In other words, the the whoever best, has their A game. Well, yeah, whoever whoever when when healthy, when playing well, when you know you know in your bag, whatever you Thank whatever you, you want to say in the lab. <laughs> I think that even this premise that you're laying out is flawed in this game well, for two main reasons. Everything's flawed, but why? One, the Niners are coming in off additional rest, yeah. three days, which is significant. As Ian Williams told us earlier, we had him on the show, and I asked him about those three days, and he said, especially this time of year where you can get that massage and you can get in the tub and you don't have to hit anybody, three days is a big advantage for the Niners. And Agreed. And the injury report for the Eagles is much longer than for the Niners. So why, But why does that discredit what I'm about to say? Which because the Eagles aren't going to be at their best. Okay, that's fine. The that's, Niners are going to be closer to their yeah. best than the Eagles will. See, maybe this actually helps me. I'm not just talking about Sunday. I'm going to let that sit for a second. Well, I, Sunday's all that matters. No, I disagree. I mean, for now. No, even not for now. They can lose Sunday and be fine. You know that. Yeah, but we're taking it one game at a time. We That's, agreed. No, we didn't. <laughs> I thought we agreed. I, 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 listen, I'm not just talking about this weekend, and I'm also going to hold out the possibility because I don't even think th- th- this is the easiest thing ever. You can all see this when you watch sports. Teams become something different a month later than what they were a month before. How the Niners look a month ago? How do they look now? Look like the same team to you? How about the Warriors two years ago? Two weeks ago. How'd they look in June versus how they looked in December, the year that they won the title? So these teams could be something completely different in January than they are now. They can absolutely change, have injuries, evolve, get better, get worse. I'm taking the collective, not just this Sunday, the collective of the first 12 weeks of this season, and I'm telling you what I think, and quite frankly, what everyone who's unbiased thinks. The Niners are the best team. Everyone I'm talking to says it. It does not mean they're going to win. Right. But I look at this and I go, if I'm going to play the percentages, then yes, the Niners should win this game. There are a number of scenarios that have them losing on Sunday. So that's not a hedge. This is true about every game. But they're a favorite for a reason. They're healthier. They're more rested. They're this, that, the other. And I'm not nearly as bothered by the rain as people think the Niners should be. I think the Niners are fine. They run the ball better. And Brock Purdy has proven a hundred times whether it be in a game or in practice, that he can throw the ball when the ball is wet. I'm not worried about any of that stuff. The 49ers are the better team, and if you play this thing 10 times, they win seven or eight of them. So they're probably going to win the football game on Sunday. I think seven or eight's a little more aggressive than I would put it in terms of if you played this thing 10 times, I would say they probably win five or six of them. If you played 10 times in Philadelphia, then you might win five or six of them. And the Niners should win this game. They're favored for a reason. And I do think 
a lot of what you said is is true in terms of what I believe. Uh, they run the ball. I don't know if they run it that much better than Philadelphia. They certainly run it differently than Philadelphia yep. does. Philadelphia yep. is going to use the quarterback a lot more to run it, and the Niners are going to use Christian McCaffrey a ton. I wonder if outside of Debo, if anybody else gets a carry, if you're going to see much Eli Mitchell, no. or we know you're not going to see Jordan Mason. He hasn't carried it since uh, early October, and I know that he showed up on the injury report as well. So it's going to be a Christian McCaffrey game, and you know Philadelphia is going to use a lot of the – the zone read option, and you're going to see a lot more Jalen Hurts running it, I think, in this game because that's something that the Niners have been susceptible against. Um, in the past, mobile quarterbacks yeah. have given them problems. Yeah, well, mobile, I mean, that's one of those things. Mobile quarterbacks give, give a lot about problems. Yeah, a lot of people <laughs> problems, hard, no doubt. It's hard to catch fast people who you weren't planning on chasing. That's, that's right, <laughs> especially when Philadelphia is going to run a yeah. lot of the, uh, the zone read and – He's going to pull it out, and he's going to keep it and try and get around Bosa or try to get around Chase Young on the other side if he's the one rushing or Randy Gregory. And I think that Philadelphia's best chance to win this game is through Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts running it and Jalen Hurts passing it. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I agree with that completely. Um, I Looking at, at, at stuff like this throughout the years, it feels to me – Somewhat normal. You can see the teams that are, I don't want to say on borrowed time. The Eagles are very, very good, and they're dangerous and, and all of those things. And I mean that even in terms of the postseason. But I, I, I just, I get the sense that teams like this, when you're winning three points, four points, overtime, overtime, come from behind, come from behind. When you live like that, your luck runs out. It, it, it tends to run out. And that's why um, I, I, I have the prediction that I do, which is the Niners are going to win this game by 10 and not see the Eagles again this year. And they're going to have to, the Eagles are going to have to contend with Dallas, and you think Dallas beats the Eagles. You think Dallas wins the division, and the Eagles wind well, up as the five seed. I think Dallas could win the division. Right. By the way, I don't even know if the, if the Eagles, if that happens, if the Niners beat the Eagles, this week, and the Cowboys beat the Eagles next week, and Dallas and the Eagles are both 10-3, and three, each with a win over each other. I don't know who holds the tiebreaker. Uh, Dallas would be 4-1 and one in the division. The Eagles would be 3-1 and one in the division. So 4-1 okay, so, and one's better than 3-1, and one, so uh, Dallas would be in first place in the division. But Philly would have the power to even that without... You know what I mean? Without Dallas losing, right. they wouldn't need help to even that out. So then it goes to conference, conference record, record, and uh, Dallas would be seven and three. Eagles would be six and two at that point, having still to play Washington, New York twice, Arizona, and Seattle. Yeah. So Dallas, Philly losses. has all conference games left, I believe. Uh, well, right. They've got those two games against the Giants. They've got Arizona. They've got Seattle. Um, and, and they've got uh, Dallas, and they got yeah, and San Francisco, right? Yeah, so, so that's their right. final All six conference games. So Dallas is six and three in the conference. If I if I okay, that was quick math, but if I if I have that accurate, if the Niners beat the Eagles and Dallas beats the Eagles, and then both Dallas and the Eagles win out, Eagles still win the division. I think so by conference record because. Right. Because the Eagles, the Eagles only have two losses. The Eagles lost to the Jets, while Dallas lost to the Cardinals. Correct. Yeah. And the okay. Niners and the Eagles. Right. Well, so, both of them, and both of them will have lost to the 49ers and each other. And Dallas has only three more conference games, and then they also have the Bills and the Dolphins back to back on the road. Yeah. So, so in, in terms I'm, of difficulty, the Dallas schedule is far tougher than Philadelphia. No doubt. Philadelphia is going through the gauntlet now. This yeah. is it. Yeah. Well, this is it for the Philly gauntlet. They, Dallas, yes. And then that's it. To, uh, at Seattle is okay. not. Oh. Yeah. I mean, yesterday. On a Monday night. You were poo pooing Seattle yesterday. Yes. No. You see, thought Dallas would hammer him. Hold on. Are we not allowed to talk about things situationally? You can, and there's new information. On the road at Dallas on a Thursday night, to me. Full rest. Fine. But that was a different scenario. Than hosting the Eagles on a Monday night when the Eagles have played seven hard games in a row. I, this is a different situation to me. Um, I could see Seattle winning that game. And by the way, Seattle came a hell of a lot closer to winning the game last night than I thought they would. Yeah. 
They kind of had it for a second, and then they blew it. <laughs> totally. But, but I, I, we go through that exercise because I would like to, I'd like to correct one thing you said there. I am not predicting that Dallas wins the division. Okay. I think the Eagles will. But you are predicting but that Dallas, the Niners won't have to face Philly again. Yes, but Dallas could. Dallas is absolutely still in the running to win the NFC East. Absolutely, especially if they win yeah. next week. And they should obviously be big 49er fans this weekend, too. Very difficult for Dallas to win the division, in my opinion, even if they have things break their way because they go to Buffalo and they go to Miami in back-to-back weeks. Dallas does. That's so tough. That's tough. I mean, and, and those are not divisional games, but they're games that count. Well, and, and if, we, know, if we go by doubt, the Dallas-Miami game is perfect. Absolute perfection because they're the two teams that have the exact same reputation. You can score a lot of points and you can beat all the bad teams, but when you go up against a good team, you get it. They both have right. the same. So, so which one wins in the situation when they play each other? Miami is a really good football team that kind of has no good wins. And, and I'd sort of argue the same thing about the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys are 9-3, and three and their signature win is what? Last night? Is that their signature win? Yeah, don't know. I mean, they lead, they lead the NFL in points. Yet, right, right. But, but you're right in terms of their, quote, signature win. They played the Niners. They played Philly. They lost them both. Right. Listen to the teams the Dallas Cowboys have beat. The Giants, the Jets, the Patriots, the Chargers, the Rams, the Giants again, the Panthers, the Commanders, and the Seahawks. Yeah, that is a total of, uh, let's see, one winning team? Chargers are Chargers are everybody's no. favorite, but they're four and seven. I think that's zero winning teams, isn't it? Uh, Seattle? Now six and six. Yeah. They're a winning so team when they beat them. They're not a... Winning team, the 500 team anymore. The Rams aren't. Nope. The Patriots sure aren't. Giants and Jets. Wow, talk about an easy they, schedule. They will not beat a team with a winning record unless you count last night because they had a winning record when they played them. This is always my favorite thing because we always talk about record versus teams with a winning record, and we usually look at that at the end of the year, like how did they wind up, but. They were a winning team last night. They were. They had, but if, not anymore. If Seattle winds up eight and nine, that won't go down as a win against a team with a winning record because right. they didn't end up with a winning record. So the Cowboys at this moment have none, have none wins against teams with a winning record. Right, which I think is important. When I hear people talk, well, who are the Niners beat? Are you kidding? Well, Dallas, yeah, Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Don't tell me Jacksonville's not good. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, winning record. That's three teams with Seattle, a winning record. Seattle when they had them. Right? <laughs> nice, uh, nice. If you don't want to, right. if you want to, if you don't want to do that, that's fine. I don't. Okay. So that's, that's three wins against teams with winning records. Yep. 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 I mean, and the Pittsburgh one is looking better and better as uh, and a win over a six and six on. and two wins over five and six. Like in other words, lost to a seven and four. Yeah, and the Cowboys lost have, to a five and six. The Cowboys' point differential is solely thanks to the New York Giants. I mean, the, the the edge that Philly has on Dallas right now is the fact that Dallas has played the Giants twice and Philly hasn't played them yet at all. And they're plus 72 against the Giants. <laughs> and I'm not making that You're up. You're not making it up. That's the number. You're not making it up. So, look. Um, 89 to 17 in those two games. Unbelievable. 89 to 17. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. So, anyway, um, I look at all of that stuff. And, by the way, how many for the Eagles? How many for the Eagles? I know the Chiefs, but the Bills don't have a winning record. Right. So the Eagles have beaten the Cowboys. They've beaten the Chiefs, and they've beaten the Dolphins. And seen. That's three. That's Same three. as the Niners. Three. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, I, I, I just think there's something to all of this collectively. Yeah. You can you you can blow it off. I get it. Um the Eagles are ten and one. They're very, very good. But if you really, really want to get into it, if you really want to get into it, and, and and it's, man, it's another reason why I think that you put all as the as a fan, you're going to put all the intensity you can into this game. How how can this game not get you all fired up? Obviously, it will. But if the Niners walk out of here eight and four at the end of this weekend, it is it is so far from a disaster. The only way it's a disaster if they lose by three touchdowns or they lose key players. 
That's the only way I find this one to be a disaster. I'm not saying it doesn't matter. Right, right. I'm disaster simply, is a big word, but I, I think you're right. I just think that you are, like, what the Eagles are about to try to do in the next 10 days is going to be fascinating because it's what we're seeing uh, may ha end up happening in the playoffs. Can someone beat, between Dallas, San Francisco, and Philly, can someone beat two of those teams two weeks in a row? I'll give you seven days. You get to play them back-to-back. -back. Can you beat them both? I find that to be a very big assignment. And so if you don't end up as the one seed, you probably remove that from consideration. You don't have to play two of them. You only have to play one of them. If you're the one seed. If, no, if you're the two seed. If you're the one seed, you're going to probably get both of them. You're going to probably get both Assuming of them. Assuming that Dallas, as a five, beats the number four seed. Which is going to be like Tampa which, or New Orleans or Atlanta. And yes, I think it'll be exactly like last year. This is very rare, but the playoffs last year and this year will probably mirror one another. Whoever gets that top wild card spot is going to go to the winner of the NFC South. They're going to blow the doors off them. And the top wild card team will either be Philly or Dallas. And they're going to blow the doors off of the NFC South. And as soon as they do that, they're going to go play the one seed. But if the, the Be six beats the three, which, which is happen. very, it happened last year. I know because it was the Vikings, but this year it's the Lions and I think they'll win. I think the Lions are equally vulnerable, oh. if not more vulnerable. I think this I mean, year. You've been watching the way the Lions are now playing. Yes. The Lions are coming back down to earth. They're a like bit, a meteorite. A little bit, but I, I find the Lions this year to be a better team than last year's Vikings. And if they win that home game, and it will be here's the other thing to throw in there. I think the wild card teams at the bottom who will be playing Six the two and, and the three are much weaker this year than what they were last year. Potentially. So we don't even know who those teams will be, but I like the Lions to beat that team. Provided that's the case, if you're the two seed, you get Detroit, let Philly and Dallas do their thing against one another, and then you play the winner, which may be on the road and might be in your house. Well, if you're the two, there's no guarantee that you're going to get the three because if the six beats the three, Detroit goes down, no, and then the six goes and takes on the one, and you got to play Dallas anyway. I get it. Dallas but is the five who beats the four, but because the six won, now the five goes and takes on the two because the one gets the worst of the teams. And I think with, with Detroit being the team likely to be the three seed, and not being proven at all and not having a quarterback who has shown himself to be really resilient and reliable. He's getting to be a little shaky, he's my a, guy, he, Jerry. He's, he's getting he's, a little shaky. He's had a tough two-week run and with turnovers. And that defense is starting to look a little bit porous. Well, he's had a, a tough two-week run as far as turnovers. He's and the still, defense has two. But he still won one of those games. Right. And, and, and I think that they'll be fine. Uh, yeah. Again, this is just my prediction. I think the Lions are going to win that. Seattle that at game. Detroit. It's probably Detroit favored by maybe five, well, four and a half or five. I already saw that earlier this year, and Seattle won. Yeah. So, I, I, no, I hear you. Yeah. You can't guarantee any of this. No, of course. It's interesting to me to look back at what happened to the Niners last year and think about the fact that because the Giants upset the Vikings, that's why the Niners had to play the Cowboys. And was there any residual effect physically in that 19 to 12 bang it out, drag it out good game, game yeah. that brings you then to Philadelphia. And if you do that the other way around, if the Vikings just uh, had a pulse, it would have been <laughs> Kirk Cousins that would have come here. The Eagles and Cowboys would have had to beat each other up. Instead, the Eagles got an effective bye. It was like right, they, two buys. the Eagles had to do nothing to get to the NFC title game last year. Right. That's um, the benefit of being the one seed. It is, but it's also another break. And, and I don't know if they'll get that break this year or whoever gets the one seed. Yeah, getting the one seed sets you up to get that break, which is the yep. beauty of getting of being the only team to get the bye, which is why everybody fights for the one. And if the Niners get to be the one seed, even if they ended up having to take on Dallas as the four seed in the divisional round, it would be at Levi's and they'd be coming off a bye and you'd be feeling a lot better about your chances as opposed to if you had to play them after having played the previous week.